Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about putting that Detroit 471 into this tinny and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. All right, only joking about the tinny, but we do get it fired up finally. Morning, Christmas Eve today. Hopefully we're gonna start the Detroit today. I'm just gonna quickly weld up the new throttle bracket to take with me up to Adrian's, then we'll hit the road. This is the old aluminium one, which I had to bend up. This is the new steel one that is taller, but we need to space it out on the back so it doesn't hit the rocker cover. So I'll just weld that in place so it doesn't flop around, makes installation a bit easier. Don't really need to, but only take a few minutes. I also ducked out to Renko to grab the exhaust manifold so we could install that onto the block before firing it up. Ugh, a fair bit of oily gunk in there from the problem we've now solved. Let's go. Going to put the exhaust manifold on now. Uh, Adrian's saying best thing is just get these on the ends of the studs here, then you can drop it on to the lip here, and then we go check underneath that it's not hanging over before we start tightening it up. The great thing about doing it this way is that although the manifold is relatively heavy, you can do it on your own without any trouble at all. Resting it on those two little lips means that you're not actually taking any of the weight once it's in place and you can just do one of the nuts up finger tight and it'll stop it falling off again. You do need to have a look underneath though. Make sure that it's not hanging in front of that lip at all because if it is, you can crack the manifold as you tighten it up. Me being me, I'd already lost one of the uh, nuts for the exhaust manifold, but Adrian just handed me one, said it's the uh, same as the Conrod's, so that's actually a Conrod nut, which is a high quality nut, so that's good. All right. Let's talk this up and get the water reconnected. So we've just um, we need some pipe and we want it to be stainless, so just to be nice, it'll last nicely, which is part of the old beer keg. There's the valve, we've cut the tube. This will be our new nice stainless shiny line between here and there to give it some rigidity and not just have rubber hose flapping around. So yeah. I love the fact different. <laughs> I love the fact that a part of this engine is gonna be a beer keg now. Well look, the last job I sent out had a beer keg as a fuel tank. <laughs> Perfect. So what more could you ask for? The finished product. Even straight if you look from back here. Yeah right. Oh look at that. Gold. <laughs> Giving the uh, Land Rover a service while I'm here. New oil and oil filter, new fuel filter. The air filter they sent was the wrong one, but we'll do that later. Do you want me to hold anything? Um, yeah. Okay, I might just stick the bolt in that side. Oh yeah, my side, yep. So we've upgraded this from shitty epoxy bolts to create nice, nice. hard washers, no lock nuts, and make it pretty again. It's not quite, ah, uh, there we go. Yep. Fairly robust. Yeah, definitely. Shouldn't go anywhere. No. In theory. All right, I'll get this uh, little plate off, then I'll throw the sump on. Yes. Then we can put some oil in the, some love juice in the engine. Very good. Another milestone. I've decided to swap this cooling water outlet from the exhaust manifold to the underside. We're going to get some new fittings and run a much shorter distance to here using some steel elbows and then just a short length of hose rather than this big loop it used to have coming out here. Keep it tucked in nice and tight. These bolt holes aren't blind holes. They go right through to the water jacket. So I'm just going to put a little bit of thread seal. On. So Adrian's made some long studs to go in the blower so we can hang our shut off flap and the air box. Should be a nice little upgrade. With screwdriver slots. <laughs> yeah, with screwdriver slots, very nice. So, actually another interesting thing you were telling me before, 
uh, was that because my rack's not sprung loaded, it's more prone to if one injector sticks. So just, the whole lot will stick. Yeah, yeah. Where Howley's, you can have one stick and it's just, just that. Just that one. And it'll, it might hold the other ones up a little bit, but it yep. won't. Yeah. Yep. Won't hold the whole lot. Yeah. So I'm slightly at more risk than he is. Yeah. Yeah. But if they kept the good fuel up, good, you know, the the chances of it having a minimal. Yeah, what, what makes an injector stick? Poor fuel and the rack seizes because they have water through it. The, right. the plunger and bush seizes so that it'll stick actually in full fuel. Right. Um, but poor fuel or um, it's started to collapse and the metal started to shine the other day. The metal yeah, yeah, it's picked up off. the metal. So that, the... that particular injector could have seized quite easily then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah, that when I pulled it first apart was just covered with yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty common. I'm amazed it could breathe at all. What gets me out the Detroits though is they can be in that bad condition and still get you up the coast. They don't yeah. die. No, there seems to be this yeah. They just seem to keep They'll... going and going. Like you can get it home. Yes, you can always fix it when you get home, but it will get you home. Yes. And would you say that's an advantage to a unit injector where an injector can fail, whereas if an injector pump fails? Oh, exactly. You just put one injector out, and you, you could, if, if you really, if it was really giving you lots of trouble, you could actually, um, when before, like you could take the arm off. Yep. So the other ones can still work, and then just get your fuel lines and just crimp them. Right. With a pair of pliers, so to cut the fuel off to its own fire. Yep. You can get yourself home without one cylinder running fully fueled. Mm-hmm. You'll have to replace the fuel lines, of course, but yeah. it'll shut the fuel off to it. Just crimp it with a pair of side cutters. Don't yep. cut them, just crimp it off. Crimp it down, yep. And then, yeah. And you'll get you, home. You'll get yourself home, and on three injectors, it'll misfire and run like shit, but... It'll, <laughs> it'll get still there. get there, yeah. yeah. It yep. will get there. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. My left nut on it. Not my right one. No, no, that's your favourite. Yeah. So I was going to have a bet with you whether it'll fire up first time or not. Absolutely. If it... All right. If it doesn't fire up, I'll get the mohawk. Okay, no worries, that's a deal. <laughs> Adrian did a water pump for Adam, one of the oyster farmers who helped me lift my Detroit out of the boat and got some uh, oysters from him, so Christmas Eve is good. It's gone off right off. Yeah. Really well, which is probably not too bad to do go that way. Well, I get some Stiltsons onto it instead. Oh, no, there we go. Nice. So 45, I reckon, 45 down. Yep, yeah. Just... Let it hang down a bit with two, I heard it, yeah. yeah. It's better than having the gasket move as you go to put it on. Yeah, and that's then... right. It, 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 it just it has a little bit of grip. It's more of an adhesive than a sealant in this. Yeah. Well, if we just get a couple in, I'll just give you a couple and then I can get on with yep. that. Oh, yeah. There's a few for your side. Move forward. Uh -huh. Back there, please. Uh -huh. There's a new pickup right in the bottom of the pan. There's quite a belly to the cover that goes on here, so should still pick up oil nicely. It's not too close to the bottom and sucking on or anything like that. Just gonna torque up all the sump bolts now so it's nice and even, much less chance of leaking. I've gotta make sure actually that my cable gives me full travel on the throttle cool. too. Yeah. yeah. You might not be quite getting it to... Um... Full fuel. Mm. So by changing the height of the injector... You say you're changing when it opens, changing the relevance to where the piston is to when it fires. Yeah. So you get it firing a bit further down the bore, so um, when the piston's out a bit lower, mm -hmm. you start to burn a bit sooner, but it's a little bit slob, a little bit more slobbery per se. So because you haven't got as much heat starting to burn the fuel, but if you get it starting to atomize a bit higher up when it's built a bit more compression up, a bit more heat, mm -hmm. it burns a little bit more fuel, burns a little bit cleaner, and gets rid of a bit of the slobbery effect. 
Right, so by firing later. Yeah, by firing later, getting the, yeah. when the piston's closer to the top of the top of the and hole. And because so. I do a fair bit of idling around, looking for stuff, I need later. Oh, yeah, I want later. So Whereas if I was doing a lot of full throttle stuff. Probably to bring it down a bit, like okay. so my brand at a 1470 instead of mm -hmm. 1480. Okay. That's a lot of numbers. Oh. <laughs> That's how many different injectors there are. There's, there's, there's hundreds, but yeah, like so, okay. So an N60. Oh yep. So they're saying one four six zero, which I think what we said it at last time. So I'm gonna probably run it at one four seven zero. Okay. Get it up, lift it up ten there, get it up that bit high, get it burning a bit cleaner, and um, not that it wasn't burning clean, but just to stop that little bit more left heads of slobbering in the air chest. And yeah, wet stacking all that kind all of thing. Yeah. Stuff, yeah, all yeah. That, it's an American term. Is it? We're Australians here. Right, oh, okay, what do we say? Slobbering, we're sorry. Slobbering here. You know, like, like a good Sheila walks past, yeah. it's slobber. Slobber, you know, that's slobber. It. You don't wet stack, do you? Like no. <laughs> you could get arrested. You could, yeah, this is very true. Um, so, yeah. So, this, you can see this different. And it also then gives you a breakdown of what the injector is, all the tips and yeah. Yeah, what punch and push. Good reference. Um, yeah, they are. They're getting harder enough. They don't. Per se, make this little book anyway. Right, okay, like so hang on to it. Yeah, yeah, hang on to it. Like I've got a later one not long ago off a friend, mm -hmm. Steve, and it's a little bit bigger. It's got a bit more, but it doesn't have as much detail as this. Okay. That's lot. They've lost some of their detail along the way. So, seventy to sixty. Well, well. Um. The nineteen seventy. Nineteen seventy. Yeah. yeah. So this one's eighty. This one's eighty-three. Eighty-three, right? So yeah, there's probably a couple in between. Yeah. And I've just been you sort of you forget to get them, and but you don't need fifty of them either. No. <laughs> so yeah. All right. So we're going to go for one four seven zero. Okay. Get them right up there. We could go higher if we wanted to. But once again, this is something we could adjust. Later right, on, yeah. Like we see what it does. Yeah. And it'll, it'll you'll feel, you'll feel here. It's a little probably a little bit. Wants to jump to life a little bit easier too when okay. it's burning up a bit higher. So yeah, okay, it's a little bit more crisp. Um, so yeah, interesting. All right, and it should it'll probably change the note coming out the exhaust a little bit. Okay. It's not much, but yeah, it will. Yeah. You'll notice it's a little bit. There. Okay, it's a cell no go thing. So right, that's fifteen, that's seventeen. So oh, okay. it should slide in and then it uh, should stop. That's interesting. All right, so it's got a like a little platform. Yeah, little step on it. Yeah. Step on it. Yeah. So yeah, so fifteen will slide in nice. Seventeen shouldn't go. So shouldn't it should go. just. Mm -hmm. Nice and sl nice bit of nearly no dra not no drag, but it's a slight amount of drag, and then it should stop mm -hmm. on the 17. So that's gives you a good 16 thou really at the end of the day. If you were to grab a 16 thou feeler gauge, it should feel really nice. Okay. Right, that's, so that's timing tool. Mm -hmm. Goes in the little hole beside the injector. Oh yeah. So you'll actually see the oil push out. Push out. Make sure there's no oil left in there. So we've had all these off and apart, so mm -hmm. they're actually it's sitting higher than one four seven. Quite a way out, yeah. One four seven, no, that's quite high. We'll get that. We've had the rocker gear off, and we've moved the rockers. There could be the posts could be in different spots, so, mm -hmm. so it does change when they're not. Yep. Gone back exactly where they were, but it's not critical because you're going to readjust. And with the time. head on, everything's attached. Like the camshaft will have some of these in. That's so right. you rotate it to go right. This is the one I'm doing. Yes. And then yeah. Turn it. Yeah. Turn so the valves down. Yep. Set injector. Injector down. Set the valves. Right. So it's a fast about. Yep. So yeah. Do one to do. Right. The so these valves are open at the moment. Yep. Yep. So you can set that injector. we will also find. We'll probably find there's another one you can do. So the injector's down here on mm -hmm. number three. It's firing it. Yep. So we can set the valves. There. Right, so we can do the valves on that one and the injector on this, on this one. one. Yep. yep. Yeah, see that one's down. See, look, that's quite low. Right. Not even, and you were saying, I think the original time, that's just got to wipe the oil off the top. top just, yes. Uh, so I'll get the oil can in a second then. Okay. You don't want a great puddle of oil. You just want a smear of oil on there. You don't want... Look, if you put that much oil on there, mm -hmm. it's so easy to wipe it off and get a false reading. Get a false reading, right. So you just want... A really nice small amount. Still got too much. <laughs> <laughs> You're an insect too. So yeah, but now you can actually see it's nowhere near it. Too low, yeah. Too low. So this is a one four seven zero timing tool. Yep. Timing tool. 
and nice. then your feeler gauge was for your valve lash. Yeah, valve yeah, lashes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we do have some timing tools for like some alcos and stuff like that, so like. Mm -hmm. A few people mentioned Alcos. What are their big, their general they're big, motors again? Like general motors again, so they're big boats, like big, big old okay. type boats and locomotives. Yeah, okay. So that sign there that is, there is a like off the front of a locomotive. Right, nice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So we're just done in the lock nut. Yep. And then let's push right here. So what are we we're coming up? So, okay, so that's you want it so it's just just bumping it so it's not quite but it's just touching it now, mm -hmm. probably just a fraction more. But when you do the lock nut up, it'll actually push the, the rocker down because mm -hmm. it takes the slop out of the thread. So, oh, of course, yeah, right. And you'll end the fine. So do a final check. So you yeah, get that right. Well, it's not quite going over it at the moment, but when you find it, yeah, it's wiping the oil off. And you, and you, if you spin that with your fingers, yep. Just use, use the tips of your fingers just and try and hold it as screw. You'll feel it just scuffing over the top mm, of the deck. You can feel it, yeah. And I guess that thing of making sure you keep it square so yep, it's not... pretty critical, yeah. Because you could easily lean into it, couldn't well, you? you can Once again, you get it, a yeah. false reading. And... Yep. So you... Uh, so the lock nut pushes... Pushes the pushes up. The up. So you actually... Yeah come past where you want to be and yep. then do lock that up it takes it back to where so the gap be. was bigger than you want it to be no it was less less, less it was, than it you want was it was actually bumping oh, it. of course because then it pushes it down yep, yes it was right bumping it. so i couldn't actually get the tool to come over the top so until then, you did the lock nut yep, yeah. and then you could okay yep. so that's just nice now. nice yeah. that makes sense all right all right so we'll do valves on number three now and they're currently uh, yep I don't know, they're all, so they're all... Oh, they can be, yeah. but the, the right oh, no, time to do it, yeah, the right time tight. to do it is with the injector down. Yep. Yeah. Right, let's just grab it there. I feel like it's getting a bit worn, so it's... Mm. Yeah, right. Okay. And so it once again, you want to make it a little bit tight before you do the... Yeah, we, so I sort of get it on the 17. Mm-hmm. But it's quite loose. Sort of get it to stop on the 17 and just get it to it let's go. Mm -hmm. That should. Depending on how much slops in the thread. Like yeah, right. Every one of them is different. Yeah. yeah it's a rule of thumb, it's not. Don't hold me to it. No, no, it makes sense though. <laughs> no, but it does make sense to go, look, this is what's going to happen when you do your lock nut up, so yeah. don't be constantly chasing your tail, trying to make it perfect before you do the lock yeah. nut. So that's probably a little bit too bad. Like you can feel it stop on the back side of the, where the, where the curve is. It doesn't look like it's, looks like it's going through, but because of the, the shape of the, mm -hmm. Curved, it actually ah, doesn't, doesn't catch the back edge of it. Yeah, right. You go in a bit further before you actually catch the stop. Mm -hmm. Probably just be. Yeah, I'd like to be just a smidgen tighter. Okay. Uh, and they are pretty sensitive. Like, it doesn't take much to nip it up. Yeah. Like a little bit on the push rod is definitely a little bit like. <laughs> right, there's no, yeah. Yeah, see? No flex in or anything. It's really direct <coughs> translation. It's pretty good, yeah. see? Like I've just. Yeah. And I've made that a bit tight now, so. Mm -hmm. I know you're shopping too. Why? Where? In the front or the back? Right. We could have a uh, shock replacement party barbecue. Yeah. yeah. You gotta do your bike, <laughs> I'm gonna do my car, you gotta do your car. <laughs> so that's pretty good now, have a feel if you want. Sorry. Yep. Probably a little bit firmer, but you can actually there. Yeah. Mm. It's good to slide and then in hit the stop. Yeah. Yep. Alright. So yeah. That's good to get a sense of what's, what's what is the right amount of, of yeah. well, and really drag on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And they will, oh, these will tighten up again in another, another couple of hundred hours and more. 
to do them again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yep. But then you probably would only do it once in every 12 months after that. Yep, and obviously... Well, running. you've done 12 months worth of running. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's so. been 12 months, 100, 130 yeah. hours, I think it was in the end. But yep. And let me check here, yeah. And what about here? So that was all set when the head was assembled. Okay. So <clears throat> when we, back when we were, went to start this, we checked them. Um, I'm sure we did. I know I have. We, um, this is to make sure the valve bridges touch both valves evenly. Evenly, yep. So during a tune up, do not touch. Don't touch, okay. Yep. One, you'll probably, undoing the lock nut, you'll probably bend the valve. Oh, wow. Two, when you do bend the valve, you might crack the guide. Yep. Three, it's just, you, you can, without having it all apart properly, you can't feel properly. Okay. And you won't, you'll end up, you could end up with a, one valve going before the other. Yep. So instead of coming down nice and square. Yeah, I'll put that up a little bit there, so. Nice and square, coming up and down nice and square, we'll end up going down like that. Yeah. It'll jam and open one valve sooner, hit, could hit a piston and Eventually, we'll actually try and drive the valve sideways, so you just wear the guides out. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's not pushing so, yeah. straight. So yeah, so you got two valves, so a four valve head. Yep. Opens two. Opens two. two. Yep. Yeah. So four exhaust valves. Yep. Opened by so two. Early valves. seventy-one was two valve. Mm -hmm. So just the valves where where the centre of this is per se. Mm -hmm. yep. um, different injector, different scenario. Okay. Um, so if you have a look, you can see the body of the injector here is offset. Mm -hmm. yep. So for later, for N-series uh, engines, I'll just grab one. So these are only adjusted with the head off, so you can see the yeah, back yeah, side, is the, it? Yeah, with, oh, with, you can do it with the head on, mm -hmm. but you need to not try trying to do it with all the rocket gear on. You can yeah, undo everything it. just connected, yeah. Yep, take that away. Take it away, undo it in the vice. Do not touch trying to do the lock nut in the engine. Just right. Take it away, put it in the vice, undo it, get it positioned. Then nip it up, just a little bit of a nip there, and then take it to the vice and lock it up. So that's a two valve in. Oh, okay. So, as you can see, this won't fit between the two valves there. Mm -hmm. That's hence the offset body. So the other valves were either side of the Yeah, body. larger round valves, that yep. makes sense. They skirt the body. Yep, for, this is for two valves, so yeah. And once your rocker's off, these just Lift they off a pin, just lift off, just lift off. there's nothing, yeah. yeah. You can throw them over your shoulder for a Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's out of an Alco. That's out of an Alco, yeah. is it? Right. Yeah. And so, can, have you just got that other injector quickly to show the comparison? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's your Detroit diesel, that's the Alco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's gold. So, yeah, something a bit of different, so yeah. So that's more locomotive. More of a locomotive, great, they're big, they're a big engine, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just coming back up the injector yeah. on four. Yeah, that's it there. So you've still got enough there to get them. Yeah, right. But you would normally still just stick to the the corresponding. Yeah, so one three, so one three. We did the valves on three, injector on one. Yep. So four. Yep. Should be doing our valves. So, mm -hmm. so that's just below two. So yep. You can see it's just spinning over it. And you haven't backed off the locking nut yet? No, I haven't right. touched it yet, so. Well, it might come up, let's see. Yeah, see, it's come up now, it's touching it. Mm -hmm. So, actually, just got to back it, lift it up a little bit more mm -hmm. to get, and not much. So, we'll be bumping so, yeah, you. you it actually wants to climb over it. If you actually hold push hold down. Hold push down on it, because yeah, it's not locked yet. So I can't turn that now. No, no. that's all right, yeah. What are you lost? There's the The what? The dip from the weights, the joiner. Yeah. Who will put them away? I put the tools away. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, put the tools, see, remember, the job is not finished until all the tools are put away. That hit the mess on the floor. It's not, it's not <laughs> they haven't put the tools away. Oh, yeah. Well, I figured that just meant that you've got to put everything away when you retire. <laughs> so with just a fraction, um, there, still too high. 
that's nice. Yeah, that's really nice. Very good. It's just wiping the oil off nicely and it yep. can put a little bit of scuff across the top of the, the follower. Mm -hmm. Adrian then went on and set the injector heights and the valve lash on all the rest of the cylinders, getting it ready to fire up on hopefully the second or third attempt. This has been in a truck. In a truck? Well, the rockers have. I've been in there with Jacob. Oh, right. So... How, how does that work? <laughs> like with the Jacobs, how... And this, when, so when you take your foot off the accelerator, switches on and it powers up the solenoid, oil pressure pushes this down and then it follows the injector rocket. So as the injector rocket comes up, it makes a hydraulic link. Mm -hmm. So it locks the oil between here and this follow and this plunger at the front. So it'll push down and open the exhaust valve, mm -hmm. decompress on firing. Yep. So, um, but you can see the witness marks where this has been sitting on there, it's been running down there. But all of them had it. Yeah, right. So it's so the engine has come from, or the rocket gear has come from somewhere that's been out of a truck. Yeah, interesting. So Clue. curious to what we were saying the other day, the engine's been built up out of something. Yeah. Yeah, as you say, is it just the rocket gear? Was it the whole engine? So for me now, it's sort of looking towards like, okay, it's been it's been a new block and build up out of a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit daggy, is it? Or? So, well that's what a new one looks like. Looks like nice and round and bubbly. Mm -hmm. Pull one of the shoes out, just, it's on it, it's not, if you're in trouble, you'd use it. Mm -hmm. Good spare to keep in the boat, but it's getting really thin out in the edges and squashed out, and they will uh, split. Good point about carrying a spare but then, okay. in turn, I've been very lucky and had one that did that, and put, put an O-ring over it, did the nut back up, and it stopped it and got me got the truck probably another couple of kilometers up the road. Yeah, just yeah. About to get a new one. Yeah, yeah. Just got you home. Yeah, it was yeah. just weeping. It was weeping a little bit, but it wasn't squirting like it was before. Yep. As I was driving along, I noticed I lost oil pressure. So I thought, oh, well, uh, here we go. Right. Filling the sump with Filling diesel. Filling the sump with diesel. Mm. So straight home, drain the oil out of it, mm -hmm. and get all the diesel out. It just look, diesel's abrasive, it just chops the beer and stuff. Yeah, places. right. And yes, these are all still readily available in Australia, and the kangaroos haven't taken them all yet. <laughs> haven't eaten them all? No. Most things are only a phone call away. Yeah. And the Tim, that's yeah. the, the fuel pipe socket, mm -hmm. the magic tool, so it's got a split. You just got to remember when you go to do it up, you don't keep trying to go all the way around the pipe, because it doesn't happen. No. It just bends it. They're only 15 foot pound, like they're not stupid tight. They're just nice and... Yeah, 15's not much, is it? No, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough and it's on that little seat. Yep. And it just compresses it like yep. it. If Stu hurries up, we'll be able to start it in five minutes. <laughs> right, I'm he's, going about, to he's, he's about to get a haircut. It's a double-edged sword, I want it to start, but at the same time... <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want it to start because you've got to go home and front the bride. Yeah. So put the torque wrench on these. I'm sure you have an elbow that can go click. Yeah. It knows that it's not too tight. And That's it. Reasonably even. Yeah. Our new uh, drainable sump. So we're going to have to get a hose on here too, aren't we? So it doesn't yeah. run out again. Yeah. Or I'll a plug. So even if you get a multi-stage one, at least then you can, if one circuit fails, you've got another circuit. Yeah. You can put a bypass on it too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, well, really, you could do all your steering off the front and leave the one on the side of the engine as your redundancy pump. Yeah, right, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, what's the story, and how do you go about, um, like, so one of, one of the things for us is, like, if we're steaming for, you know, two and a half thousand miles at one go, yep. we, don't, we don't necessarily want a huge amount of parasitic hydraulic power that we're not going to be using. So, is there a way, like, to throw a clutch on it to essentially There would be. You could, well, you could, you could probably even put a dog clutch in it. And if, but if yet again, if you had a Detroit, we could put it. I've got some V twin compressors you could put on the back of the engine. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to convince me to swap out the main engine because the amount of work it took to get it in there. 
Yeah, so, exactly. All no. right, we're about to put some oil in this, so we need to uh, get a hose on here so it doesn't just all end up on Adrian's floor. I'm just going to cut, I'll pop this rubber hose on just so the coolant circuit's complete. Yep. So we turn this around, but we're going to buy some 90 degree pipes when the shop's open again tomorrow. But for now, we're just going to go here to here, but we're actually making a nicer version for the final product. Yeah, you can always see them in your mind, can't you? You know you've got it somewhere. Adrian's finished making a hose up from the bottom of the sump so our oil doesn't run out. And then we can attach a pump down the track. Or even as you say, just stick the vacuum. Yeah, stick the vacuum thing down the hose. Yep. Okay. Yes, we now have an oil filler that points straight up due to the removed fuel filter and then the much neater cooling pipes. Getting its blood back. Yeah, and I'll lay the cable on, then I'll mark that and drill and yeah. tap that in the boat, I think. Well, you need to make sure you're getting full throw too. Yes, yes. I did get in trouble the other day for the way I opened my oysters. You did? Yeah. From who? My Robbie. Oh, for Robbie? Yeah. Did he call you a back shucker? <laughs> Come on, it's got to be first time where I keep my hair. It will, it'll start first go. Nothing starts first go. It will, I promise. <laughs> we'll see. So, you can get the right amount of uh, release and, and get it to lock in. Yep. So, if I move that now, let's see if I'm, mo I'm moving it. I'm actually moving it. You can see it going backwards and forwards. Ah, uh, yeah, yep. So you want it sort so of... So it's like a suspension adjustment. Yeah, so just get it sort of there. Sort of holding it, it's not tight. So mm -hmm. Maybe up. So hold that and then... Yeah, oh. It should work. And then I should be able to... Yeah, drop back in there. Yep. It's fine. So I'll just get a cable on here. And yep. then a bracket of some description somewhere. Yeah, a, whatever can you get that bear, yeah, even off one of the bolts here, mm -hmm. straight down. Yep. And maybe a spring between the end of the cable and here. So it just, it just keeps it pushed in. Right. So you can't accidentally. Yes, yeah, so you can't walk past it. Oh. Yeah. And next thing you pull all your seals out or whatever. Well, yeah, that's right. Well, it probably won't start, so you'll be lucky. But Yeah, if it's already off. Yeah. Yeah, as long as it doesn't vibrate off when it's running. Pretty much it won't because the weight of the flap mm -hmm. will hold it, but it's just a good idea. It's just. Just bring it down. Yeah, normally bit. sprung loaded. Okay. The spring in here, which over time for the seawater, this one's disappeared. But yep. So it's the spring between the end of the cable is enough to push it out, like, mm -hmm. and just keep a bit of. Oh right, okay, yeah, just in here. Yeah. And, and so you're pulling against the spring. spring That's a good spring, idea. Yeah, yeah nice. Turn the cable as well when you go to put it back. Yep. Okay. Good idea. So, oil in, water in. We're just using water at the moment because we're going to rejig the cooling system later. So there's no point wasting all that coolant. No water. Yeah, right. Coming up. Yeah, right, because that is higher than that point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's on, isn't it? dropped in there. Oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. So, But it's nice having that at the top now, yeah. as well as having the water come through diagonals. Yep. Well, that's just taken, you can see how much it's yeah. out, of out of the header tank. Yeah. Yep. Very good. But it is critical to say it has to be bled. Mm. Yep. Otherwise just got uh, it will get, it will, it could stay with an air pocket there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is for putting diesel under pressure? Yeah, so there's about, oh, there's, not, there's no pressure in at the moment, but mm -hmm. usually you put about 60 psi, just, mm -hmm. you one that's hard to start, it'll help make it restart easier, and also pre fills uh, this. Is this cheating? No. In our bets? This is how you do it. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, I'll do it without it. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no. We'll
Yeah, no, mate, if you want to cheat, that's fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but no, if you need to bleed it, yep. on the side of the road, you had a truck that had run out of fuel. Mm -hmm. So you're going to try and fill, you know, fuel oil, filters and everything, put the pressure can on it. Yeah. And uh, if you, or if you want to test for fuel leaks, cap Yeah, the right. Turn, yep, of course. Off the return off, pressurise it. Yep. And you can have a look, see if there's anything leaking. And that'd be less wear on the injectors. Like if you're cranking it for a while with no that's fuel right. in the injectors. It's a lot better for the injectors. Yeah. It doesn't hurt them, yeah. But Stu's worried. That I'm cheating, so today, no, 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 no. You could use no, whatever techniques without. you. No, today we'll go without. All right. <laughs> no get out of jail clauses. That's all right. They're waiting in the <laughs> Um Squirt a little bit of water just on the seal of the jab scale, you reckon? Or yeah, I think we'll just, when, when it starts running, I'll hang the hose. Might just poke the hose. Yep. There, so it sort of splashes around. Just dribbles around, around it. Yep. Someone. Someone. <laughs> The ring that everyone talks about does work. <laughs> ah, so you spin it to the spin inside. Around. Yep. Oh. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers, mate. Cheers. So thank you. Love <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks, laughs> <thanks, laughs> your thank, work. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the haircut. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it ran really well. Pretty yeah. happy with it. Um, we've got 65 pound now. Yeah. When the engine's pretty warm. Mm -hmm. Um. Got a couple of little water leaks to sort out. Which I think should have got me off the hook. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, they, they didn't develop till after it ran, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. But no, it ran pretty good. So yeah. it started pretty much straight away. It fired up. Yeah. Not too bad. Um, considering something had no fuel in it. And that's and the thing about the choice, is the self bleeding. Like, yeah, if like you had an injector pump that ran dry or. It, yeah, it didn't. Yeah, it had enough just in there to get it going and then pick then itself it'll pick up. Fuel up. And that's no. Um, Primer bulb on the line, nothing. nothing just nothing. into a bowl of... Into the, suck it into the bucket of diesel and That's suck it, it straight yeah, up. Yeah. Um, look, if you were trying to suck it through a filter, you'd be probably doing a bit worse off. Yep. You'd use the pressure key and fill it up. And yeah. Probably get it running on the pressure key and shut it off and then... Which is away. a good little bit of kit to have. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It saves so much time and time. Yeah. Even with the newer ones, the electronic ones, you can fill them up, fill them with fuel, and tell the computer it's got pressure, so it will start. Right, okay. So it will start instead of trying to. So the crank. computer going, nah. Uh, no, there's no fuel, I yeah. can't start yet. Okay. So you can give it a bit of a false thing. Yep. Um, so it ran well, did everything it was supposed to do. It's a little bit cleaner. Um, air, just because of your injector timing, you think? Yep. And the air chest 2 is a lot, the nice clean air out there, there's no oil at all. No slobber. No slobber, which is, was, it should be no slobber at this point in time. But yes, until it's. Yeah, so it's probably done a couple, a few, few thousand, thousands of hours, but yeah. it'll always produce some in the air test. It's a natural thing for a two-stroke. Yeah. But other than that, it should be pretty dry. Um, 
a little air test casting you've made will catch the little yeah, tiny bits exactly of somewhere for it to go somewhere yeah. for it to go we'll yeah. run it like i said to you we'll run it without that on just so we can see make sure everything's okay for the first yeah, week in the boat it. Yeah. and it, i don't it will be any issue at all yeah um Maybe but the air flaps on there the new shuttles on there oh so many things are better yeah and yeah the compressor worked well it shot yep. the cap <laughs> shot the cap, shot the cap <laughs> somewhere <laughs> we don't even know where it's gone um what else happened? What else did we do? Uh, well, the, the pipes, so now you can, you can fill it with oil. Yeah, fill it with up. oil was nice, good to fill with oil. Um, and, and bleed the coolant. The coolant bled out beautifully, like in the end. Which we couldn't do before, because no, it was- gone. So, yeah, it's, it was all wrong. The bottom, the top of that pipe, yeah. at one end was probably full of air. Yeah, the whole time. The whole time. Yeah. And you probably wouldn't have known. Yeah. We got rid of one fuel filter, but, yep. which then meant we could bring the coolant line in, got, yes. or the raw water line the raw in, raw water line, which meant the oil filler could be up, could turn up right, deep um, sump pan. We didn't have the deep sump pan before. That's a know. huge difference, I reckon. Um, and I think it's made holds definitely holds more oil. On. From what I remember before, it's mm. probably eighteen or not liters. Yeah, got another two liters in the sump now. And and because it's concentrated, that pickup is right down in the bottom in of the, the oil. Yeah. Even now, if I tip the engine up, it'll be fine. Yeah, it, it by can't, the time we can't come out of the oil. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, and it's and that needle was never. I mean, obviously, it's sitting still there. But I think if the needle doesn't bounce, the oil pressure is quite steady. That's and, all. And that it stayed there nice. really nice. Yeah. Also means that we haven't got any pinholes in the pickup, so it's not sucking in the air. Right. Yeah. Which we were pretty, I was pretty certain of anyway. But oh, after brazing it, brazing it up, yeah, yeah, like yeah. You, a little pinhole will make yeah. little fluctuations. Yeah, You'll, um, and it won't pick the oil up properly. Yeah. Um, so it's worked quite well. Everything's turned out. So we got the mechanical oil pressure gauge as well. We didn't have that before. No, that's, that was another thing we did. Yep. Uh, yeah, and the new lines for the air compressor. But there's a lot we changed. Like it was surprising that, how yeah, much just different things we've moved around. Yeah. Um, to make things right again. Yeah, and yeah. I think, I think you'll notice a big difference in the whole way it performs too on the water. Like, yeah. I think lifting the injectors a little bit higher, one of, it seems more happy now. It yeah. seems more responsive once it wants to do something. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what it does when we get it. Uh, we filled up every yeah, we're, so we're back um, again. So, uh, so when we get on the water, high load, like yep. really give it the beans. Give it you can make it work. Like push against a wharf, tow, tow as much as you can. Tow, yeah, like, and get him to put it in reverse. Make it yeah, work. Yeah, right. Just like, make it work for two, at least two hours. A good couple of hours. To yeah. bend the rings. Um, so you think that'll make a big difference, and then eventually bigger prop. Yep, yeah, which is what you're aiming for. So yeah, that'll be our track. next. Um, yeah, next little adventure. Next little adventure is cutting that prop off that's been welded on. Yeah, and we had a little phone call with Damien today, and uh, you're going to get him to pull his Cummins out. Yeah, the Cummins is going. <laughs> I've decided that he definitely shouldn't have a Cummins in brew peg. <laughs> he wants to drive too many other things, and he just can't do it on a Cummins. No, but you did have some good ideas for him, so, so we, yeah. might, uh, we might see a little bit of a connection there down the track, which yep. would be nice. Yeah. And, uh, I'm still getting in Adrian's brain about starting his own YouTube channel. I'll try. I've just, I, have, I have been contemplating it now, and um, yeah, we'll. I'll, I'll help you. I'll yeah, train you. yeah, someone will, someone will have to yeah. um, get me under control, but yeah. yeah. But no, there'll be plenty to see. Yeah. And it'll be different too. Yeah. That I don't just do de Detroit, but yeah, yeah, you there's work a whole lot of stuff. Work on a horrid range of things. So yeah, yeah. varieties. Or create good. things, and you know, here's another thing. Here, yes. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. well, anyway. Thank you, mate. That's all right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, all right. That'll do. Yeah. Yeah, no ice cream. <laughs> no ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I knew I was scratching my nuts. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you camera lady. <laughs> so, Adrian's been asked about his bike. <laughs> A couple of times, Michael, Michael, I think it's Michael it was, I think. Um, so yeah, it is mine. Um, it's a 78 FLH. Um, so I brought it, it's an import from the States. Um, so I've just started, I had another bike which I ratted out. So I ended up with the three inch primary I've put on, which I like better than the clothes primary, just because it looks cooler. Um, I've, upgraded, or I've gone back to an early model swing arm for the rear because the, um, or the starter motor didn't fit in the back. It was all dragging on the, on the original swing arm. But yeah, it's just a project. I'm gonna sort of piece it together, um, ride it, see what it does. And then I've got another motor, which in the process we're gonna start doing up a 96 cube 
shovel motor, so it's a shovel head, so yeah. It was just having a bit of fun, okay. but yeah, like it's, yeah. Give it the close up. I do like your new solid rear. Yeah, I got rid of the spokes, and plus the wheel bearings are gone. Oh, they were gone, so, yeah. Yeah, the wheel bearings in the hub were gone, so it's yeah. like, I don't know. Gone. It's a bit ratty at the moment, but it'll, um, oh, it's sweet. It. Yeah. When it's finished in a, a week or so, I should be able to ride it. So. Nice. We'll definitely have to see it in action then. Yeah, and then we'll see the studio on the road and we'll see if it's safe enough to ride. <laughs> then you know if you can get on. Yeah. So it'll be just a bit of fun. And the other one was a nitro, had nitrous on it and stuff like that. <laughs> Time it had to be packed away in the corner with two alpha. <laughs> two alpha nitrous it's on a two bike. Two alpha nitrous on a bike. It's just it's, it's bad news. But yeah. So we'll just this will be this hopefully be a nice hundred horsepower bike with the back wheel when nice. it's all finished. So yeah. Very good. Thank you. Pretty. So yeah. Thanks. Well, it's running again. So obviously, huge thanks to Adrian for all his hard work, expertise, and taking the extra time to teach us all about you know how he does the work he does. Uh, also, huge thanks to Jenny for her hospitality and camera work. So, the engine's still at Adrian's. The shops were closed between Christmas and New Year that I needed to buy the few bits to finish the cooling system. So, I'll go back in a couple of days, we'll finish the cooling system, then we'll get it ready to lift back into Renko. All right, well, I hope you guys had a great New Year's Eve and have a great year ahead, and I'll see you in a week or so when we get this Detroit back into Renko. All right, see ya. It's work time, not feeding time, sorry. Actually, you'll probably find some spiders in here. Eat those. It's all right. Soon. Limp around to look for insects. Not falling for it. Here's your comb starting to look better. Scabs come off this side now. See you soon. Thanks for visiting.